WISC TV now presents For the Record. How you can be a hunger hero. Next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. We're certainly more aware of summertime hunger these days. Understanding the traditional efforts to fill food pantries and provide meals for families during the winter holidays is inadequate to respond to widespread food insecurity in our community. We can make the case for Goodman Community Center being a hunger hero already for its many efforts to feed kids and families in Madison. But Goodman is also partnering with WISC-TV in a project to collect donations to help provide over 12,000 meals this summer. And we're calling it Hunger Heroes. And joining me to talk about the campaign are Goodman Community Center Executive Director Becky Steinhoff and Center Assistant Director for Child Care Programs, Angela Tortorisi. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thank you. For so this is cool. Us. Yeah. I love that we're doing this together. Me too. Um, and just start, Becky, by I guess, you know, helping people understand this idea of year round hunger insecurity and, and why we traditionally don't think about it in the summer. Absolutely. Well, in our community, a wealthy community, um, more than 10%, actually it's closer to 20% of children across the board experience hunger. Yep. And in among African American and other children of color, it's between 25 and 35% of young children in our community experience hunger on a regular basis. Yep. So during the school year, they, a lot of families rely on free and reduced lunches and meals for their children. In the summer, they, most families don't have that opportunity. So we pick up a lot of the slack of providing meals to families when those meals aren't available through right. schools. Um, over the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, um, Becky, I've become increasingly aware of the breadth of food insecurity and how it, um, you know, the income levels that experience it are probably a little broader than a lot of people think. Do you see that at Goodman with the families that you serve there? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. It, 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 I mean, one thing that's great is me all the meals are free to everybody who comes to the center. So nobody knows which children or families are um, we're getting reimbursement for free meals or some support. Yeah. But it is absolutely you would not you'd be surprised at which families you might see there that are coming needing meals because they don't have enough money to buy food. Yeah, all of the research lately too, Angela, in terms of how hunger affects performance and behavior and things with children. You must see that quite a bit. We do, and uh, so as we're prepping for summer, one of the trainings that we do with our new staff is uh, around what do you do when a child is struggling, and what we ask them to do right out of the gate is really focus on basic needs. Mm -hmm. So asking the child, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you tired? Did you not get that hug from mom or dad or caregiver that you need to fill your bucket to have a great start to your day? And often the response we get back is, I'm hungry, and so we really tell our our staff right out of the gate. We're not going to get in a power struggle about food. If a kid is telling you they're hungry, we're going to feed them. And so in addition to providing uh, breakfast and lunch and snack, we also keep um, healthy snacks on hand. And we always try to have milk in our fridge so that if a child's letting us know that they have that basic need, we want to meet it and let them know this is a safe place and we have resources and we want to be a support for you. Yeah. We're going to talk about the, uh, a capital campaign a little later, um, Becky, which is, I, I think, really wonderful is you know I've we've watched this center grow over the last 40 years in just remarkable ways but explain to people a little bit what Goodman Center is like and who comes there sure um, the Goodman Center is I think one of the more diverse places in our community so throughout the day there's a broad variety of people with different races different incomes different backgrounds religions that are coming into in and out of the center to access our programs or resources that are being offered at the center and in the last uh, 10 years since we've moved into our current building we've grown by almost 400 percent so we are now finding ourselves in the need to um, expand and uh, into a next a facility across the street to support the work that we're doing and the demands for our services. And wh what, what's the extent of the, uh, of the food component of the Goodman Community Center? It's huge. Yeah. Actually, it's been growing 
dramatically. Not only are we feeding our own children and families and offering a food pantry three times a week with meals associated with the food pantry, and we also feed older adults every day. We also are providing meals to, to com other community centers, and that's all part of also a teen employment training program all around food. And so food is huge. We actually, this summer, are serving about a thousand meals a day within our the walls of our building. Um, so by the end of the summer, that's a significant number of meals. I, th I think there are still many, many people out there who have this perception of, of the role of food at community centers as people without coming and getting bags of food to take home. And what I like so much about Goodman is it's just, it's sort of woven throughout everything in the building, right? I mean, it just, it's part of everything that goes on there. It it really is, and, and one thing I was telling Becky when we were checking in about doing this interview is one thing I loved in the summer is you'll, it's not uncommon to walk our hallways and see racks of bread that have been dropped off from bakeries that weren't able to sell them, or local CSAs that had some extra overflow, and it's access for all. So we don't know who's grabbing that loaf of bread, and it doesn't matter. Um, they're taking it if they need it, and it's access for everyone. Yeah. Sound familiar? It does, yeah, absolutely. Right, right, right. And, and another, you know, it's it's food in addressing food insecurity, but we also use food building community. You know, we serve meals family style um, in our programs, and so there's a lot of discussion. So it's 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 edu and there's a lot of education around local food sources and how do you alleviate hunger by looking at what's grown locally and produced locally. So it's it's educational, it's it's nutrition, and it's it's community building. Yeah. I mean, our, some of your favorite memories of your family are sitting around your table at, at, you and bet. having conversations with your kids about their day. You and bet. we do that at the center. You know, to the extent that we can anticipate the community response to this, Becky, you and Goodman have been doing the traditional winter holiday um, drive for, for many, many years, and particularly Thanksgiving, which is right. a big one for Goodman. Huge. I mean, you serve... How many families? 3,600 Thanksgiving yeah. baskets, yeah. And the response is always generous, but right getting closer to the holiday, it's always a little nervous, yeah. knowing that there's going to be enough. What's your assessment of the sort of the community's understanding of this issue and their willingness to participate? Oh, I'm overwhelmed uh -huh. by the generosity of our community. It's always a little dicey getting down to the edge of Thanksgiving basket. And I think sometimes people need to hear that we're you know they need to be reminded many times before they yeah. finally fill that bag and bring it in or, or donate online or through a check mm -hmm. and that's okay we've gotten to know that people come that our community is so generous and they do come through um, but summer is a time that actually is busier than just about any other time in terms of need of food um, we have over 300 kids at the center each day Mo the majority of our kids are low income and, and need support with meals. Yeah. Well, when we come back, we'll talk about what you need, how people can provide it, how they can help. We're going to do that with the Goodman Community Center right after this. For the record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. Hello, steak. They can take the car in the next five minutes. Otherwise, it's going to be a week. I'll be right there. Taking care of your car shouldn't take over your life. Now at Meineke, there's three cool ways to save on AC, like up to $100 off AC services. Meineke, on with life. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $5,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to virtually eliminate your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you can save, call now, 1-800-908-0532. Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes, and we can save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk. Credit Associates. Live better. Better, debt free. Find out how easy it is by calling now. For the secret the credit card companies don't want you to know, call Credit Associates now and see how much money you could save for free. Call 1 800 908 0532. At Ho Chunk Gaming Madison, big wins happen every day.
Hello, steak. They can take the car in the next five minutes. Otherwise, it's going to be a week. I'll be right there. Taking care of your car shouldn't take over okay. your life. With Meineke, save time and schedule your appointment online. Come in now for a basic oil change for just $19.95. Meineke, on with life. I am back with Becky Steinhoff, the longtime executive director of the Goodman Community Center, and with Angela Tortorisi, who is the assistant director for child care programs at the Goodman Community Center. And we are talking about Hunger Heroes, a project that Goodman and WISC TV are partnering on to provide food during the summer uh, uh, summer months at Goodman for families who need it and to combat the food insecurity that's rampant in our community. Angela, you've been there 10 years now. You, you, you know this. <clears throat> but I, I'm still struck by uh, the poverty, I guess, uh, and, and, you know, abject poverty, but, but sort of uh, even people in the middle class in our community that, that need food and how that shows up in all of our community centers. Yeah, absolutely, and it's so important that we take the time to really get to know our children and families mm -hmm. that we're working with and build those relationships so that there are uh, trust, there's trust there where kids can open up and families can share, and so it's not uncommon for us, especially over the summer break, for a, a parent to call and say, I have nothing in my fridge, can you help? Uh, and so we're very fortunate that we do have a food pantry that we can access uh, any time that we need to get emergency food bags. We've also been able to work uh, with our older children, older elementary and youth, and really use when they disclose they are, they're having anxiety around food, or maybe we find them hoarding food or filling up a backpack for younger siblings. Uh, we have actually started allowing them to shop in our uh, food pantry where they can pick out the foods that they enjoy eating or that their younger siblings enjoy. We also are, uh, like to give them the opportunity to really be intentional with those choices and really think about what meal can you make? What have you learned? To make in cooking class? What are some items that you can put together at home if mom or dad aren't available to, to make a meal? And so really empowering them to learn life skills and, and have the opportunity per, to provide for their family. And Neil, you, when you talked about the middle class and often using f needing food resources yeah. as well, and that is absolutely true. I mean, the f people have sort of an idea of who might go, uh, go to a food pantry and you think of a transient person and certainly they do access food pantries but the majority of food pantry customers are working sometimes two jobs they or they have a medical emergency or it's a woman who's trying to separate herself from a domestic violence situation and you know gain her independence so it, it's that is the majority of the population who use food pantries and the number one recipient of food pantries are children yeah. So. Even if it's just once or twice a month, right? You get Absolutely. to that point where you just need something to get you by for mm -hmm. a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I love the model, too, because not only is it, it feels a more normal way of accessing food, but it cuts down on waste. Absolutely. Right? I mean, yes, that's yeah. a, which is such a huge right. issue for us. Absolutely. Um, so you're doing okay with fresh food, right? That's not what this is all about. Well, in the summer, we do. We always love if you have a garden and you have extra. We love it. Okay. As Angela said, we put out racks and people come through and help themselves. Okay. So, we we do want fresh food. We also mm -hmm. process fresh food. It's part of a, our teen program. Yep. So our teens learn to process food. So that goes then into the food pantry in the winter months when there aren't uh, fresh vegetables as readily available. Yeah. Um, but in the summer, it's the food drives um, to fill our pantries because the pantry is busy it's access to financial resources so we can purchase the food that we need for our meals um, yeah absolutely so what what are you asking for specifically from donors for the hunger heroes drive um, to access our website if they can make donations towards purchasing food yep. if you want to run a food drive in your neighborhood or your place of business or within your church or synagogue we would love um, those as well. They, any way that works for you to support relieving hunger in your community works for us. There's about like a dozen items that you're encouraging people to bring if that's what they choose yep, to do. Correct. Peanut butter, yep. box uh, dinners, that kind of stuff. Yep, the staple yep. foods yep. that, that are popular with young families and young people and are shelf stable so that for families that are a little more, have a little more, we do serve a lot of homeless families as well, and especially in the summer. Um, so 
things that are shelf stable that people can use and I do think on our website is a list on the Hunger Heroes yeah, page of the, the items that we are looking 3, for and channel 3000 yeah. yeah but um, but donations then really help with perishable stuff That's right dairy and that kind of thing absolutely and food drives are inconsistent you don't get a you know they, they're what those families or those you know doing the food drive donates we we have we do purchase a lot of food I and mean, that is a big part of what we do mm -hmm. we rely on second harvest for a lot of our our purchased foods but we also buy food from Bear Cisco and other and golden produce and other <coughs> vendors in the community because we we need if you need 10, you know 100 pounds of beans to make the meals you have to go and buy those fresh beans you aren't right. necessarily gonna have those donated is it true Becky that someone who gives you a check for $10 you can buy more food with that ten dollars than they can and and donate it absolutely that is true we buy at wholesale rates we buy from second harvest where it's like 16 cents a pound to buy food so yes we can stretch dollars and and a lot of our vendors give us discounts as well so we absolutely can do that so what's what's the goal for the drive to make sure every kid and every family and every individual who walks in our doors gets food and meals yep. um, I, that we aren't struggling to find resources that any kid who wants to take a bag home for their siblings and uh, over the weekend has that opportunity um, so he said a thousand meals a day is a lot of food that goes through our and over 12,000 meals this summer is that what you already I, do that's the food pantry amount yep. I believe uh -huh. okay. um, but in our the meals we provide and serve that we make on site in our kitchen with teen employees um, working with chefs it's a it's a thousand meals a day so it's right. five thousand meals a week we're open for nine weeks um, this summer per, per programming the numbers are probably irrelevant I mean it's not like you can have too much food no I mean so just no <laughs> don't look for a limit and then decide all right we're done we yeah, don't have to do this right. anymore and the reality is uh, some once in a while we end up with really successful food drives we support other food pantries and community centers uh -huh. as well so if you, if you have access, you'll um, share it with the other ones, absolutely, is that right, and vice versa? Absolutely. Yeah. There's a great network of food support among the community. Yeah. It won't go to waste. Which, of course, reflects the need that, mm -hmm. uh, that the community has. All right, um, we'll, we'll, we'll give people another idea of when and where they can do this. But when we come back, I want to talk about the capital campaign and the growth of the Goodman Community Center. And we'll do that right after this. Thank you. It's the season for storms and possibly down power lines. And while it may look harmless, a fallen line could be live and dangerous. Stay away from lines on the ground in areas covered with storm debris where fallen lines could be hidden. Always assume that a down line and the objects around it are energized. Don't touch them. And most importantly, if you encounter a down power line, call MG&E right away. Stay safe. Stay away from down lines. For well over a decade, WISC TV3 and Channel 3000 have paid tribute to top-notch teachers nominated by our viewers. Every month, we spotlight and salute an area teacher, and we want to hear about your favorite. If you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Top-notch teachers sponsored by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries and by Concordia University. All appliances are on sale now at the Brothers Main with the largest appliance showroom in Dane County. Visit us online at brothersmain.com, your local store for more since 1938. This is Sheila. She got satellite. I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD and primetime on demand. I had to get special equipment for on demand. Plus, sometimes in the rain, our services go out. Because of that dish on your roof? Get Spectrum TV, $29.99 a month. Call 844-677-2999. And Spectrum Internet starts at 100 megabits with no data caps. We have to get Internet from another company, and it isn't nearly as fast. Get Spectrum Internet, $29.99 a month. Call 844-677-2999. Spectrum Voice has unlimited nationwide calling with no additional taxes and fees. <laughs> I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract, and... I'd have to pay $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts, and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it. 
Calling Spectrum. Spectrum TV, Internet, and Voice. $29.99 a month each. Call 844-677-2999. CTV and the Goodman Community Center are partnering on a project we are calling Hunger Heroes, and we are asking for your help in donating food and resources, dollars to help with uh, feeding people who need it and during the summer months in particular, with all of us traditionally focused on, on, on the winter uh, need for food, but hunger insecurity being a year-round event. And the Goodman Community Center deals with it year-round, and we're trying now to uh, make sure that there's plenty of food available for people who need it in the summer. And I'm here with Becky Steinhoff, who's the executive director of, uh, of the Goodman Community Center, and Angela Tortorisi, uh, who's the head of youth programs there. So in addition to this, there's a capital campaign going, and it's been going on for a while. Mm -hmm. Goodman Community Center, for people who don't know, is in this remarkable building. Uh, on the east side. I mean, it's really quite beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and a historic part of a part of the city. Yeah. And now you're looking to expand across the street. Yeah, we are actually in the, um, purchased the Madison Brassworks building, which is Kitty Corner across the Capital City bike trail from the center. It's uh, will be finished and we'll be moving in for us to start programming this fall. Um, that also, so all of our middle, high school, college career employment readiness programs move across the street. Um, our administrative offices are moving across the street. But what that does is allow expansion of early childhood, elementary, after school. Our food pantry is going to become twice as big. Older adult programs are growing. So in the current center, that'll be like the program space. Um, the majority of our programming will expand in that building as well. Seems like a really big deal. I mean, do you work with the school district and with various schools on coordinating that stuff? Absolutely. Uh, Maybe Angela yeah. can talk about our partnerships. Yeah, the, our, we partner with the district at all various levels. Yep. Uh, we have a 4K partnership. Our elementary programs work really closely with um, our local uh, elementary schools, but also at the middle and high school level. So the district is extremely supportive of the work that we're doing um, and really is a key partnership for us for connecting with children and families on both ends. And you've just right. been strapped for space. So There's not enough space. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, because you've grown, I mean, significantly from Atwood, right. Atwood Avenue right. over to... And so part, part of it is um, the capital campaign. The biggest part is growth and needing to accommodate more more children, more spaces. We're also having five new community spaces in the current building and two in the Brassworks building. Uh -huh. We receive about 100 calls for space use from the, our, our community that we can't accommodate. So we're trying to address... So uh, community groups that just need meeting space. And or, yeah, or nonprofit events yep. or um, yeah, programming that, that our community needs okay. done by other nonprofits. Okay. Um, private rentals as well um, but so that's a big part of what we're trying to address as well we also as planning for this building did a bunch of community cafes and worked really hard to make sure we had diverse representation really to saying what are we doing that or what that you like and what things would you like to see us do that we're not so we are trying to address some of the things we heard in those ca community cafes that people really wanted in our community that we weren't doing or, so you're nearing the finishing line right well, what we're nearing the finishing line of the Brassworks building. Yep. We then there's the renovation of the current center, and that'll go until about June of next year. So, what do you need? How close are you? We the whole project is 11.4 million. Okay. We have raised about just over. Um, we have 10. We're about 10.2. Okay. So we have about 1.2 million left. So we're about at the 90 percent mark of the campaign, which uh -huh. is a wonderful place to be. I'll bet. But 1.2 million is still a lot of money. Um, but uh, while you would welcome big gifts now, this also seems like a time where a whole lot of small gifts this, could yep. help really this put This is where, the, absolutely, we are well la into launching the community campaign, which is if you can afford $5, which little children donate sometimes, or $100, whatever it is to help us get across that finish line, we are, we are anxious to, and to and have those donations and we also are doing something we have one of the most beautiful rooms in the center at Brassworks we're doing that as a raffle so if you don't uh, donate a uh -huh. hundred dollars or more 
to the campaign, then we'll do a raffle and whatever name is drawn gets to choose the naming of that Very community cool. space. Very cool. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just go to the website in terms of donating. Yep. All okay. the information yep. is there. Yep. Go to the website. It's all there. Yep. And then the dates for Hunger Heroes. There yep. are specific days that uh, we're asking people to come and yep. donate. June 28th from 6 to 9 p.m. Friday from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Saturday from 8.30 to noon. We're, we're All at the center. There'll be people there to take donations. Yep, we're doing a phone bank with um, local notables and uh, to, to raise dollars to support all the, all the hunger issues we talked about already. Yeah, yeah. and it's going to be on Channel 3 and Channel 3000. I know throughout, the, throughout those days, and there's a lot of information on channel3000.com. Does the uh, capital campaign help expand any of the any of the food stuff? Absolutely. Really? So the the food pantry will be twice as large. Um, the also the education kitchen where we do our culinary lessons for our teens. That'll be in the new building and it's going to be designed as a teaching kitchen, which we don't have currently. It's a galley style kitchen that's very oh. difficult to teach in. So kind of remember that. <laughs> so we'll, and then that's also, we have a catering company that's part of the teen employment training program. So that'll also be. Is the cafe still going? Um, it isn't at the moment, uh, but we are actually exploring uh, right. in the new space a, a community cafe model, which yeah. is a pay what you can, uh -huh. um, which are growing across the country. Right. And so, well, I'm sure it's going to be a success. I'm glad we're partnering together. And thank thanks you. for coming on to talk oh, about it. Thank you for inviting thank us. You. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this.